Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which mid-level graphics card from AMD and NVIDIA should you buy? On the red team, we have the AMD Radeon RX 6800 16GB GDDR6 graphics card. And on the green team, we have the RTX 3070 8GB graphics card. Doesn't sound very fair, does it? Well, there's a lot of little differences between these cards that go way beyond just how much VRAM they have and maybe how much raw performance they have because there are some feature differences as well. Now, we're going to show you a couple of benchmark results here comparing a couple of different games between these cards. A full detailed video with 17 games tested is coming soon. But in today's video, I'm going to take these out of the box put them side by side, show them to you, and then give you a couple of quick thoughts as to which card you might want to buy. Stay tuned, because this is gonna be a fun one. Before we go too deep into this video, let me actually just tell you the answer right up front. No clickbaits, no tricks. The AMD Radeon RX 6800 wins almost every single benchmark versus the RTX 3070. In some cases, it trounces it. It's not even close. If you are looking for the most frames per second, the most VRAM 16 versus 8, if you're looking for the most horsepower for the money, well, you have your answer. The 6800 is the clear an obvious winner here. If frames per second is the only thing you care about, and if DLSS doesn't count, that's where the asterisk behind that win comes from because the RTX 3070 has better ray tracing, and thanks to DLSS 2.0, which is much better than the first version that came out, those numbers kind of switch around a bit once you play games that actually take advantage of those features. It's also worth noting that comparing MSRP to MSRP, the RTX 3070 is less expensive, $499 versus $579. Not that that matters in the spring of 2021 when I'm recording this and both of these are $1,000 cards on eBay. Hi to everybody watching in 2022 and beyond when these are reasonably priced. In February of 2021, when this is recorded, it is actually very hard to find either of these cards new right now from any reliable source at under $1,000. Yes, it's crazy, but we're going to take that price and put it aside because that's not the point of this video. I want this to be useful six months from now, not just during the current cryptocurrency craze. If these cards are the same price, and if you don't care about ray tracing and you don't care about DLSS, then by all means, go get yourself an AMD card. It does have improved drivers over the first generation of Navi. I've had some issues with the 5000 series from AMD. I am pleased to report I've been playing games on this. I've been doing a variety of testing on both this and its big brother, the 6800 XT, and I've had essentially zero problems. It has been far more fuss-free than the first generation of Navi was. So two thumbs up to AMD for doing that. And did I mention it has double the VRAM? 16 gigabytes of VRAM versus eight. I know which one's gonna age better into future games. Even if maybe it doesn't have the ultimate horsepower to take advantage of it, 16 is better than eight, all things considered. There are a couple of exceptions to this advice. Do you wanna play Cyberpunk 2077? Allow me to introduce you to the RTX 3070. Turn ray tracing on, turn DLSS on, and that performance advantage of the 6800 goes away. Now, to be fair, this card was kind of designed for Cyberpunk, or rather Cyberpunk was designed for this card. And if you're playing games that are optimized for NVIDIA and take advantage of those unique technologies, it's a really hard sell to tell you to go to AMD because the truth of the matter is I've played Cyberpunk on these two cards and I would take a 3070. But if you're playing non-DLSS and non-ray tracing games, well, as you'll see from some of these tests, there's no contest. Frankly, the 6800 
would beat a 3080 in some limited scenarios. It trounces the 3070. I would not be surprised if a 3070 Super or a 3070 Ti comes out later in 2021 because these aren't even close at times. At 4K, they're much closer, but at 1440p, dozens of frames per second difference separate these cards. And now that I've given you the conclusion of the video, I hope you stick around to the unboxing because we will push that one aside for the moment. We will take this very lovely Radeon RX 6800 here and take it out of the box. Now this is in fact genuinely sealed to which some of you are going to say, uh, how have you tested it and just said everything you just said? I have two of them. This was actually sent to me by a viewer not free, he did sell it to me, but he sold it to me for just his cost plus shipping and um, I gave him some gas and pizza money because I was appreciative that he sent me an extra one. It never hurts, especially when new cards come out like this, to have an extra card. And so that is why I've already been able to test it. So this XFX card right in front of me, I've not actually tested. The results you're seeing are from my Power Color 6800. Same card, different manufacturer. Opening this up, we can see styrofoam. I know it's very, very exciting. And inside we have an XFX warranty card. We've got a stop important driver information. No driver disc concluded. I don't need a driver disc. Everybody's going to go to AMD drivers, download their automatic driver updater. It'll get all the drivers installed that you need. And Bob's your uncle. Taking the card out. Man, this thing is heavy. But it's exactly the same as my other one, identical in all respects. And yes, that means I could do crossfire testing. Maybe I will. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you'd like to see me do some crossfire testing. I love, okay, can I just give AMD's designers two thumbs up here? I know I'm going to sound like an AMD fanboy here in a minute, but if you've watched my videos for any length of time, I've been accused of being an NVIDIA shill more than being an AMD fanboy. I like good deals, I like good performance, I like good products. I love the Founders Editions in the 6800 series. Not only does it look nice, I think these three fans look very nice. I think the design language, it's got the R right here. This is, for those of you who've already seen it, you'll see it when it's a, when it's an R, basically the cut in for Radeon. The, there's no RGB or anything on this, but that's fine. It looks very nice. You've got two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. It is exactly two slots thick. It, it doesn't extend out. Now, it's worth noting that the reference cooler on the 6800 XT is bigger than this. They look the same. They are not. The 6800 XT does have a bigger cooler, but these are really nice. It does not run hot. It is not loud. It is a reference car that is very quiet running. Very happy to have a second one of these. I absolutely will be using it. Now, here's what's really fascinating on these things. The monitor connectors, they did not put three display ports on here. Looking at the overhead, we have one HDMI 2.1 and two display ports and a USB-C. So if you want to plug three monitors in for iFinity Surround Gaming, one of them is going to have to be HDMI, which is fine for a lot of people, but just be aware of that. Otherwise, this thing is built like a tank. I know you cannot see weight on your computer screens, but this is genuinely heavier than it looks. And it's cool running, and it's quiet running, and I like it. This is how you do reference cards. If you can find one of these, for $579, which is the launch MSRP, buy one. Don't think buy one. That is an amazing deal, especially right now, considering these things are going for $1,000 on eBay, which it is what it is what it is. Next up, we have the EVGA XC3 Ultra. That sounds very fancy. So this is not the only model of card that EVGA makes for the 3070. You can also get the For the Win 3. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But opening this box up and we find a plastic insert. Definitely different than the way uh, most of the other companies do it in terms of 
styrofoam insides. And opening this up, there is plastic on this card. In fact, I'll just leave it here for a second. Let's see if I can do, can I do a single ASMR peel of the plastic on this card? My success rate with this, especially on cards where it's curved is, well, I'm already failing. Can I salvage my attempt? Interesting they don't bother to put any of this on the founder's card, but I guess maybe people feel, yes, I'm talking over the ASMR peel. My apologies. I really should just create a channel of nothing but, but peeling plastic off and brought new products. I'll probably get a million views. Hey, what do you know? Victory, one piece. So you can see here, we've got three black fans and it looks exactly like the AMD reference card, except, well, honestly, in some respects, it's not as nice because of the way the fans are open, uh, but that's a personal aesthetic uh, taste. Looking at the card overhead, you can see the fans here. There's no actual metal or anything in between them. They can come pretty close to each other. And they all turn in the same direction, and they all have this very pointless E for EBGA there, which I would think that just disrupts airflow, but who knows. Oh, wait, we've got one more ASMR peel, and being a flat black plate, this obviously should be much easier. And then having said that, watch me fail spectacularly. I can't even get started. There we go. There you go. There's a nice peel. We do have a protector on the golden fingers on the card and on the back plane, but there are no plugs here for the video ports. But we do have, oh, there's another one. I just noticed this here. We'll have to talk about that in a minute because I have a feeling I missed that on the last one. There is uh, three display ports, one HDMI port, no USB ports, two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors, and it is very flat. Uh, with the top of the card where the where it plugs into your system. We have five copper heat pipes running directly through, and there are holes in the back, which is actually pretty cool. This third fan uh, does not blow air out the top traditionally. I mean, some air can come out the top, but what this is is a pass-through. The actual card itself ends, well, it really ends right here. There's a little extension here to provide the power connectors over here, which I appreciate. Some cards put them in the middle, which is just awful. That should never happen. In fact, they should be over here on the end. But they left this open so that air can pass through, which is definitely appreciated. And the back plate is, it does feel like metal. If it's not, boy, it's pretty close to being metal, that's for sure. And it's not too bad, it weighs less. Compared to the uh, AMD card, man, there is no difference in weight. As I, You can't tell weight. I don't know if the AMD card is twice the weight of the EVGA, but it's at least 50% heavier. It is obviously, obviously heavier. What should you buy? Well, that depends. Do you want to play games like Cyberpunk 2077? Do you want to play Watch Dogs Legion? Do you want to play games that have future ray tracing in them? You will play Minecraft or RTX. You need an RTX card. Yes, the AMD card has ray tracing. It's first generation for AMD. It's much weaker than NVIDIA. If you are interested in ray tracing, NVIDIA, that's all there is to it. DLSS, DLSS makes a big, big difference. Now, if there's a quality loss to be sure, depending on the settings, DLSS quality is very hard to tell the difference in Cyberpunk. DLSS performance, if you pixel hunt and you freeze frame and you compare DLSS off and on, can you notice the differences? Yes. Can you notice them while there's explosions and driving and stuff going on? If you want to find a problem, you can always find a problem. Now, if you turn DLSS to ultra performance, yeah, that's fuzzy. I actually, I tried it on my 3070, um, but it was, yeah. Ultra performance was just too much quality loss. So DLSS can certainly go too far. I really wish AMD could supply more of these at the moment. I am genuinely impressed by the driver stability and the general fuss-free nature of the 6800 series over first generation Navi. I really am. It feels very much like the 500 series cards. 
I have used the RX 580 cards in numerous builds. My daughter has one in her computer at home and it's been very dependable, very reliable, very fuss free. I like the 500 series cards from AMD. The Vegas and the first generation Navis were fussy. This has not been fussy. And I have both this and I have a ga MSI Gaming X Trio 6800 XT, which I also like, which also has been very fuss free. I've run all 17 games on both this and the Gaming X Trio, and I had exactly zero problems. Now, there will be full run benchmarks of all the games over on the Rogue Tech Gaming channel. Link in the video description below. If you would like to see tons of game benchmarks without me yapping over them with charts, Go subscribe to Rogue Tech Gaming. Go search. We are uploading tons of content to Rogue Tech Gaming with all kinds of benchmarks, with far more actual gameplay, including live gameplay in some games that I have not done a lot of testing in recently. Fortnite, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Cyberpunk, of course, The Division 2, and there will be others. So go check that out if you're interested. And then I've got some uh, more detailed comparisons coming up very soon in all those games right here on Tech Deals. Did you like this video? Smash that like button. Did you love this video? Share it with all of your friends. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon. Hit the join button if you would like to support our channel directly. Early access, exclusive videos, a loyalty badge, and more. Comments in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys think about this video. A little bit of a different format. I'm showing you the cards. I'm showing you some benchmarks. Now, I didn't put these on the test bench in this video and like show you sound or anything. They're, they're completely different coolers, completely different cards. What would be the point? I talked about it, uh, showed you the other one rather than just sh you know showing you footage of it, which I don't think would be very informative because it's certainly going to vary depending on the card. But showing you a little bit of the results and talking to you about my experiences. I would love to know what you guys think about this sort of video. Links in the video description below. Now, I'm recording this in February 2021. None of this stuff is available retail anywhere. I mean, occasionally you get lucky at Newegg or Amazon. I will put links to Newegg and Amazon down below, but I will put, also put links to eBay. Yeah, I know. I know we could get into that conversation. We're not going to, but we could if you're just going, I'm tired of waiting. I want a card. It could be six months. Let's see what happens in six months. Let's see what happens when August or September rolls around. Are these going to be back down to five to six hundred dollars? Or are they going to still be over a thousand dollars? I'd love to see some comments from you guys in six months. You know, here in September and oh my God, they're still a thousand dollars. Or here in September and finally under five hundred dollars, I found a deal. Uh, we shall see what the future holds. I wish my crystal ball could tell us, but unfortunately, it's in the shop for repairs. Thanks so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.